G'day folks, Greg Budd from Bud's Baits here. Welcome to the African Lure Craftsman. In the ensuing episodes, we'll be taking you along while we design and handcraft timber lures and hopefully get out into the water to use them. From early days as a kid, I've been making fishing lures. Many times on social media, I've been asked to share my secrets and I think that day has finally arrived. I've designed lures for some of the big boys in the industry and I sell my lures worldwide. I'll do my best to show you some of the hacks I've learned along the way. Stay with us and experience the wonders of casting lures to bass, giant catfish, tigerfish in Zimbabwe, which I'm fortunate to call my home, and cross borders with us as we'll target the denizens of the deep all along the African coast in magical places such as Mozambique. Through it all, I'll share a bit of my daily life and business experience, which can be quite tough in Zimbabwe at times, as we take you along to run the daily gauntlet of survival. Subscribe and click the notifications button to stay with us. So what we've got here is the little uh, 100 drip stick. This has been coated now and we've left it to dry. It's nice and hard. This is the Italian Carvello 2K. Very scratch resistant, even with the wire, dent resistant. And what we're going to do now is the next couple of steps to take this from a foiled detailed lure to a fully epoxied finished lure. We've now sanded back the clear coat. We've got a very, very smooth lure there. Try and try to touch it as little as possible, of course. Again, quite difficult when you're trying to get the angles on camera and everything, but this is just a demo, so there we have it. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a pilchard pattern or a pulley or a sardine pattern on this particular lure and to achieve that there's a little hack I've got which I developed some years ago to get a very effective scale pattern. Now basically what we're going to want to do is with a darker color first is going to put a dark band along the back and we're going to at the same time do things like the gill detail which will be a light line around the gills, a darker patch around the eyes or a ring around the eyes, a dark spot on the on the fin and various things like that just to give it some added depth. So what I've done here, and it might give a little bit away about my habits, because they're all brandy bottles, <laughs> is I've pre-mixed colors here. Um, there's only a little bit of this left, but it's enough to do it. And these are colors I use all the time for the same uh, patterns I do on, on various lures. So this is the dark color I use for the backs. It's actually a very, very dark blue. These paints now are auto base coats. Uh, they're compatible with the 2K, they stick very well, they bond very well. And then what I use is I use tints as well. These are just tints, they're straight paint tints for auto base coats that I'll use to make up my own colors. So let's go with the dark back here. Apply as much paint as you need in your cup. It's plenty. Just check that it's spraying okay. If anything, maybe a little bit thin. I might have to thicken that up, but we'll just go ahead anyway. I always start with the back. I'm not wearing gloves at the moment. I find gloves very difficult to, to use. Yes, it is a bit thin. So I've thickened this paint a little bit now. We're going to continue just covering the back, and as you'll see, where we've sanded back will disappear. There'll be no seams there at all. Always get the back of the lure for continuity, get the, the line following on the back as well. Another couple of layers. We'll go over these with more as we go along, and I always apply a glitter effect at the end anyway. Now we're going to go into the actual line itself. So very carefully, and I always use a smooth edge table as my guide, so I can move the airbrush to and from. A lot of people ask how I paint straight lines freehand so so easily, and that's how. Is hold the lure at the same angle your hand's going to move, so it's the airbrush is the same distance using it, and this is a bit of a technique, using as little pressure as possible so you get just the right amount of paint. 
start to align from the eye. We always want a little bit of a dark edge over the eye. Continue that. What I'm going to do now is the, the ring around the eye. I'll always darken the base of the eye as well. Okay, I'm using 3D eyes, so one thing I need to do here is just turn the lure a bit and get the white recesses inside the, the eye cavity. Otherwise, when you stick the eye in, those will show and those look a bit, a bit uh, ugly. Turning the lure up and get the other side. Okay, that's all done. So we've got our dark rim. Sorry. And now we'll just also put a little bit of a dark streak under the toe point there. And now we're going to do a gill line. So behind the main gill here, I'm going to do a thin line just to get more depth. Very slippery. Like so. Little spot on the fin. And now we can use that as a guide to continue with our bat. Any anything excess, don't worry about it because we're going to use a technique just now that will clean it up. There we have it. One other thing I like to do on these, let me just get this working properly, is just a little bit of a line. Sorry, let me get an earbud first. So any little mess ups, a little bit of thinners on the end of a cotton bud, dampen it down, you don't want excess there, and you can just remove that quite easily. It's on the um, on the top of the, the clear coat, so there's gonna be no problems there. I've got a little bit off there that I didn't want. And now what we got to do is do a, a little back line on this other gill here, just a little bit. Just like so. And now repeat on the other side. So I've done both sides now. Just be careful and make sure that both sides match so that your width of your line is the same. And they are pretty much the same on that now. And then you've got the bait of the lure already looking semi-realistic. Semi so we've uh, done the back uh, of the lure now, which is the darker color we're going to use. And now I'm going to show you a little bit of a, a hack I learned a couple of years ago, which uh, can give the lure a very effective, realistic finish. So what we're going to do now is using a tint and a little bit of in this case thinners or solvent we are going to put a lighter color dropping below that dark line onto the scale pattern that you can see there if you actually feel the scale pattern even though it's been clear coated it's still got texture so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and leave paint in the lands and the grooves of the scale pattern there and I'll show you how we do that. So this is just a tint, as I say, it's a very effective color. Um, it's a very iridescent sort of blue. We want to make sure it's not too thin. Uh, one more. 
pretty thin in here, so that's why I'm doing a couple. Wipe that off, just check it. Perfect. Always close your jars, I've had many accidents with that, knocking them over. And now what we do, as I've said before, is we go over that, but we're just trying to drop the line a little bit onto the scale pattern. We put a little bit of color on the top of the gold there as well, the bright and blue. A little bit on the fin, on the dot. And we'll do the other side as well. done there. So now for the next step. Just going to use a hair dryer which I always keep close. I'm going to make sure that is dry although that's touch dry already with these plates. Quite nice but what we're going to use now is what I call the sandbag technique so here's where the magic happens okay a thousand grit paper I'll find my scissors wherever I put them again I'm going to cut a small manageable piece off one of the corners and you might have to cut a few of these if you're doing more lures fold that in half so it's manageable Okay, so what our intention is with this, this water paper is we're going to try and remove all of the paint on the back here, leaving color in the grooves, which will kind of create a, a, a realistic scale pattern. And I'm going to do that starting at the bottom, moving all along the lure. Then go up a slight increment and you'll see how where the scale is raised that's where the paint's coming off. Go up again. Right into the corners there. What you got there is a shiny areas, which are the back of the scales, and we have painted the lighter color. I'm leaving the color in those indentations because we'll spray over that with a toner, which will make it look a lot better. Okay, for the next step, we're going to go over this whole area, so basically half of the back with the same tint or the same tone we used for the lighter color which gives that little blue sheen that sardines or pilchards have and uh, we'll make it come alive That's our base colors done, creating a unique relief of the scales using my sandback technique. 
Next, we'll add the final detail and bring the lure to life. 